That song is special to me because uh, Jesus Christ is special to me. Amen. And uh, God made a difference in my life. God saved me when I was 15 years old. I got saved uh, July 20th, 1997. I was in the state of Michigan. Uh, have any of you been to Michigan? Anybody have been to Michigan? One gentleman over there has been to Michigan. A couple folks over here. Yes, sir. Uh, you're welcome to come. You are invited to come to Michigan. Uh, it's a beautiful country there. Uh, we, we, have, uh, we don't have the tall trees like you folks have here. There's some tall trees here. It's a beautiful country out here. We just came down from uh, Yosemite Park um, not too many days ago. And uh, just gorgeous. God, God did something beautiful over here. <laughs> um, but this is, uh, uh, I, when I put this together, uh, I put it together so that I would also preach through my presentation. And so that's what this is. This is, this is not a 10-minute DVD. This is, I will be preaching a sermon as I also uh, go through my presentation today. And uh, so this will be a little bit of my testimony and also our uh, calling to the field of Ukraine and as well as our time over there and what our plans are. And then I will also give you some testimonies of some folks uh, that have been saved over there in the ministry. And so I hope it will be a blessing to you all uh, as we get going into this. Uh, uh, first and foremost, uh, please, take, uh, please take one of our prayer cards that are uh, on our back table back there. Uh, I offer, offer them to you. Please take one uh, to keep us in mind and pray for us. And uh, thank you, Pastor Kim, for letting us come by today. I sure do. sure am thankful. Uh, I, I, I am not trying to offend anybody here. Uh, I have never, I don't have experience with Koreans, so please be gracious with me. <laughs> uh, I, am a, I am an American, and, uh, through, and I know Ukraine. And Ukraine people are rough and rude and uh, get up in your face and yell at you and, uh, and then pat you on the back and say, you're my best friend. Uh, that's how Ukrainians are. So I had to learn, coming back from Ukraine, uh, I had to learn how to smile again. Because I had forgotten how to smile being over in Ukraine. And, and uh, I had forgotten how to be nice to people again. So uh, I am not trying to be offensive. If, something, if I do something or my gestures or something, just put it under the blood of Jesus Christ, please. <laughs> Amen. Uh, uh, let me get going on through this. We, uh, the country of Ukraine. Uh, am I in the way here or am I okay? Should I stand to the side, or am I okay here? Huh? I'm okay. All right. The country of Ukraine uh, is, a, is a tween country. It's a transition country between Europe and Asia. And uh, they have a lot of similarities of Europe, and they have a lot of similarities of Asia. And uh, they are located right there centrally, uh, right above the city of Jerusalem. Uh, Jerusalem, as you, uh, as you know, is right there, uh, centered on... Uh, centered in the world. Uh, that's God's city. Uh, that's where God's attention is. Uh, that's not a man's city. That's God's city. And uh, if you want to come from there, the Bible says that promotion comes not from the, neither from the east nor the west nor the south, but from God, promotion comes. And so we are from the north right here. And uh, if you come to Jerusalem, you go straight north, right up through Turkey, right up through the Black Sea. This is already Ukraine. Right here, this is Ukraine, and uh, that is the Crimea Peninsula, and that was taken over by the Russians in 2014, and uh, we are located just over here to the west in the city of Odessa, or just outside. Uh, Big Dan, uh, he is uh, Big Dan, the missionary, he's way up here and over here quite a bit, and uh, we, we've never seen each other in the, in the country together. We're just too far away from each other to, to get together, uh, oops, casually. So uh, uh, moving on here, Mark, uh, uh, I'll give you, a, I, I, I enjoyed hearing uh, Korean. I assumed that was Korean that I heard. Uh, I, I don't know, but I assumed that's what that was. I don't think that was uh, Spanish, amen. Uh, but uh, I, wouldn't, I wanted to speak a little Russian to give you a taste of Russian. And uh, this, this verse, Mark 5, 19 says, Idi damoi k svaim, raskaji im što satvrio s tabojo gospod i kakon pamiloval tibia. 
This was the verse that God gave me to preach in right before I came off the field. So this was my going away, my uh, bye-bye verse to uh, Ukraine. And uh, I didn't want to leave. It was a sorrowful day. But uh, just like this verse, God gave me this verse that it's time to go home to America. And, uh, and so I said, yes, sir, yes, God, and, uh, and I want to obey the rest. I want to obey uh, to, have the, to show people how great things God has done for a sinner such as I, amen. Uh, John 3.16 in Russian says, uh, John 14.6 says, John 14.6. So that's enough. I won't speak any more Russian. Um, but this was the verse. God gave me this verse to come home. And so, uh, so I came home. Now, when I got saved, uh, uh, I was 15 years old. I took off running for Jesus Christ. Amen. Uh, when, when I got saved, I got saved because my preacher, uh, my pastor, he preached on hell. Uh, anybody who doesn't trust Jesus Christ as their Savior, they're going to go to hell. Uh, and everybody who's born into this world is a sinner. Every sinner is bound for hell. And, and I believed that as a 15-year-old. And so I came down at a, 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 on a church service on a, a Sunday night uh, after the preacher preached. And I came forward uh, to an altar, kneeled down, and trusted Jesus Christ as my Savior. And uh, that was, uh, oh, I don't know, 22 years ago, 23 years ago, 20, 21, 21, 21 years ago. That was 21 years ago. And, uh, and I got saved, Amen. And uh, Jesus is my Savior, and uh, uh, I, got took, I took off running for Jesus Christ, and, uh, and I mean that. I opened up my Bible, and I started to read it. I wanted to know what was in here. Uh, I, uh, I started passing out tracts and witnessing to people. As a 15-year-old, I was witnessing to people, trying to tell them about Jesus Christ, my Savior, amen. I wanted, I wanted to serve the Lord. You know how that song goes, I just want to please the Lord. That was my desire as a 15-year-old, and uh, I, we, I went down to PBI in uh, 2000 and uh, to 2003 and, and sat under Dr. Ruckman and Pastor Donovan now and uh, had a great time down there. I learned the Bible, uh, but after that, I got married, amen, and I don't know why Jeju waited so long to get married. Uh, I guess he needed to finish school. I don't know, but... Uh, he, uh, uh, I wonder if his wife's much younger than him or much older. I didn't ask. Uh, but uh, God gave me uh, a help, my help meet, uh, Sarah. We got married in 2006. And uh, in 2006, uh, I went to her church, which is Pastor Heaton's church. This was in Michigan. And I uh, was there to preach as a missionary. And the Pastor Heaton uh, asked me, he said, now, you, are you Casey Klein? I said, yes, sir. And uh, he said, no, are you married? And I said, no, sir. He says, do you have a girlfriend? I said, no, sir. He said, good, let me introduce you to someone. And he walked me over to Sarah. He said, Sarah, this is Casey. Casey, this is Sarah. He says, uh, I have introduced you. Now you have to do the rest for yourselves. <laughs> and so I said, amen, I'll take that. And uh, so we got married three and a half months later. Why? Because we're Americans. We run everywhere. <laughs> Fast. And now, now I, drove in to, I drove in around Los Angeles to get down here last night, and you folks are just crazy here driving. Uh, I almost got killed last night with s some drunks. There was drunks or under drugs or something out on the roads. And, and when you're going 100 miles, down the, 100 miles an hour down the road and, you know, you're swerving like this, uh, but, you know, uh, as Americans, you know, we, we live life fast over here. And uh, uh, when we went to Ukraine, now you folks probably already know this lesson, but I had, to learn a, uh, I had to learn a cultural lesson when I went to Ukraine that they don't go, go, go fast over there at all. Uh, they sit, sit, sit. Amen. Uh, I don't know how you say grandma in Korean, uh, but grandma in Russian is babushka. Uh, babushka, and these are grandmas. This is uh, th these ladies here. They usually they're watching the kids. 
Uh, that's their culture is the mommy and daddy work if they're still together and the grandmas watch the kid. I presume that's probably similar to what it is in Korea. I, don't, I do not know. Uh, but uh, these are babushkas. That I call them the spy network of Ukraine. Uh, they call me a spy because I'm American. Uh, but they, I call them the spy network. Why? Because they're plugged in, see? They, have, they are in the technology just like you folks here. And uh, they, uh, they see and know everything that goes on in the country. Uh, they really do. But uh, I said all of that for a reason. I wanted to go to Ukraine to work and go fast and take off serving Jesus Christ, but uh, God had other plans for me, so instead I signed up for an apprenticeship where I was serving with this gentleman. This is Chris Rue, uh, Chris and Naomi Rue, and I believe Pastor Schreib knows them from uh, PBI days. Uh, and he, uh, he has been there since the early 90s in the country of Ukraine, so he's been there 25 years or so serving God. Uh, in the country of Ukraine as a missionary. So I signed up. I said, I'm going to work with him and, and learn from him. And, and uh, that, that's a blessing. And I encourage you, learn everything you can from Pastor Kim here. Uh, I, I think he's a good man for you to follow and to learn from. Amen? Amen. Uh, what have we been doing? Well, we've been involved in the ministry. And uh, uh, my favorite thing that we've been doing is VBS, Getsky Bibliski Klub. Uh, that's uh, Children's Bible Club. And uh, they, we, in the summer months, uh, this goes over very well, where you put this tent up for the kids to come in, and they, f they just flock to the, uh, uh, they flock to the, uh, to the tent. I'm going to stand over here just because I keep getting in the way of the screen. Uh, but they flock to that thing, and they, uh, uh, they come out by, uh, by, on a low day, we have 30 kids, and uh, on a high day, we have 80 children. And uh, we preach the gospel of Jesus Christ to them, amen? And we have fun, and we throw lots of candy at them, because uh, kids are, when kids are happy, they listen to the gospel. If kids aren't happy, if, they're, if I learn from my own children, uh, if their bellies are not full, they will not do anything for you. And uh, we had to walk up, we had to walk a mile down to the sequoia trees in, uh, in y Yosemite, National Park, and then we had to walk a mile back uphill, and I said, we're going to feed them at the bottom so they'll be happy. And then I promised them, I said, if you beat Mommy and Daddy to the top of the hill, I will give you ice cream afterwards. And, uh, so, and it worked. It worked. Uh, we give kids, we, we uh, preach the gospel to these kids. We, we take our time with them, and, uh, but we always, every year, we have a handful of kids that get saved. And, uh, and when I say saved, I mean you can see the change in their lives. You can see if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. And old things are passed away. Behold, all things become new, 2 Corinthians 5, 17. And uh, these kids get it. I'm excited. We get excited when this comes around, when this time comes around. Uh, something else we try to do is try to teach our folks how to play music. I enjoyed the music this morning. And uh, that was beautiful. The, the, the kids, the young children, uh, did a fantastic job. The older children did a fantastic job. Uh, you adults. And uh, that was, I loved that music. Uh, I miss music. Uh, Ukraine, I do not like Russian music. I don't. I hate Russian music. Uh, it drives me nuts. And, and I, don't, I question sometimes if this is where I'm supposed to be as a missionary, you know. In joke, I say that in jest. Uh, but we, what we try to do is try to teach our folks how to sing. So, what sounds better, good singing or bad singing? <laughs> and so we take them to the piano. We play a note, and we say this. And that's, how, that's what your voice is supposed to sound like. And they have, a, they have a gift. They can hear the note, and they can sing four different notes at the same time. It's a talent. Uh, they, uh, it, it's a mess. We, now listen, we take one song, and we are always trying to translate new songs. Uh, we, they just discovered victory in Jesus a couple years ago, uh, for an example. Uh, they just discovered, uh, 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 what's that other one? He Lives. I, I, I won't sing it, but uh, there's songs that the, uh, the American culture has thousands of hymns and good songs to sing. I'm not counting the bad ones. I'm not talking contemporary Christian music. I'm talking a real good songs. Uh, and our folks, they don't have that stuff. And maybe it's the same with, you, with the Korean culture. I do not know. 
But we take one song, we practice it for three to six months before we sing in church. And it still sounds special. <laughs> we try, amen. <laughs> I just cannot succeed, but uh, we get a blessing out of it. The church gets a blessing out of it. Uh, we sing, when we sing, we, some of the songs, you know the song, Up from the grave he arose with a mighty triumph for his foes. You all know that song? Uh, when we sing a song like that, we literally open the windows of our church building so that the city can hear what good, godly singing is. We want them to hear this is what's glorifying to God. Amen. Not this. That stuff's junk. From hell belongs in hell. Amen, amen, amen. Uh, I'm thankful for my wife. She's very supportive, and she's followed me over there. She takes care of my children. She teaches in church. She writes our curriculum that we use over there. And uh, she, is a, she does a fantastic job. I'm thankful for her. Uh, a part of our ministry is, uh, is charity work. Uh, the people of Ukraine are very poor. Uh, they make $150 a month salary. Uh, the, the poverty line, if you make less than $200 a month, you are in poverty in the country of Ukraine. And the average person makes poverty level lines poverty level uh, income. And uh, so what do we do? A part of our ministry is we buy grain and rice and clothing and things like that just to try to show people, hey, God called me to have compassion on people. Amen? And sometimes you do things just because it's the right thing to do. Uh, serving Jesus Christ starts with compassion and loving people, and that's what we do with this stuff. Uh, we have we have uh, funeral costs usually come out of uh, our pockets of Pastor Chris Rue and myself. Usually we pay for funerals. Uh, if there's a hospital bill, uh, we have socialized medicine in Ukraine, and, uh, and nobody can afford it. It's free, but nobody can afford it. And if, you're, if you don't know somebody to get you in the system, or if you don't fit the proper guidelines that they have to get you in the system, then it's too expensive to get something done. So what do we do? We help pay for things, um, and that's just a part of what it is. I won't go on about that, but Ukraine is a poor country, and uh, some other things is, uh, is orphaned, orphan kids are, are uh, thousands and thousands of them, especially since the war started. And uh, a part of what we would like to do is to be part of the city-run orphanage. Uh, but the problem is they don't like us. They don't open the doors for us to come to them. Uh, because, why? Because we are Baptists. They have their religion. Theirs is Eastern Orthodoxy. They are a state religion. Now, if you don't know, State churches hate Baptists. They have always hated Baptists. Uh, I'm sure you're familiar with what's called the Reformation, started by Martin Luther, 1517, in Germany. The Catholics answered the Reformation with a counter-Reformation. And what did they do? They killed Baptists by the thousands throughout Europe. Why? Because they're a state church. They don't believe the Bible. The Bible says where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. There's freedom. They don't like that, and they don't like us. Uh, but, but one time a year, this orphanage calls us. You know what the big holiday is, Christmas. And they say, hey, our money's running low. Our kids don't have gifts this year. We're running out of food. Can you come help us? You know, you could be offended at that. It's possible to be offended at that because they only ask when things are low and there's a need. But, hey, we go. Amen? We go. And uh, we go there. We give them the food and the gifts. And we give them a gospel lesson for free. Amen? They don't ask for this. We give it to them. Amen? 
And, uh, and hey, like I said, we don't see fruit from this. This is a ministry. This is a, the root of compassion. And a lot of times, especially today, uh, the world preaches love. The world preaches acceptance when they don't have any of that. They don't have the real deal. You can see it in people's eyes that they are scared of other people. You can see the angry anger, the retribution, the road rage. People can preach all they, they can say what they want to, but when they don't have Jesus Christ, they don't have real love. That's the truth. And serving Jesus Christ starts with having compassion. And that's what this is all about. You want to show people, I want them to know that there's a God of heaven that loves them. Amen. I want to know there's a church there that also loves them. Amen. And uh, so that's what this is all about. Our, our main ministry is a ministry of love, but it's preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. And we do that in tracks. Uh, our folks uh, have done it. With, uh, we do street ministries. And, uh, and also, of course, whatever we've done different things. Whatever we've, This year, actually, we were just, uh, when I say we, I mean Brother Chris, because I have been here in America, and he's been over in Ukraine, but he has actually gone into the public schools to be able to preach the gospel there. Why? Because in 2017, it was the 500-year anniversary of the Protestant Reformation. And so the president said, well, let's let Protestants come to the school and teach why. And so we have been allowed in public schools in Ukraine this last year to preach the gospel to them. Amen. And uh, that's what our main focus is, to see folks get saved, to get people in church. <laughs> I don't like the movement today that is, all, is about home church, that says you don't have to come to church. You can watch church on the TV, and that's good enough. I don't like that. I like it as a last resort, if that's all you have, but I don't like it. Why? Because that's not the church. You heard the live music. Does that sound better in person, or does that sound better over YouTube? Uh, my wife and I were able to go watch somebody. We've, we, we, we love his music. His name's Andre Rue. Uh, he's not a believer as far as I'm aware. We just his classical music that they play. And we were able to go watch him. Let me tell you, there's a difference between watching him on YouTube and seeing him in person. There's a difference between being in church and watching it over the TV. You're not going to get the Holy Spirit of God on the TV like you're going to get it here. You're not going to hear the music. You're not going to hear the preaching. You need to be in church. And uh, that's what we try to teach our folks. Now, we've had a lot of problems. One pr main problem was our assistant pastor, who was destined to be the pastor of the church, Slavic Kamashko, left. When I mean left, I mean he didn't just quit coming to church. He quit serving God. Now he's a drunk. Why? Because if you walk away from Jesus Christ, you never know what you're going to do. He walked away from the Lord, and there, there was a big um, vacancy left after he departed from us. Another problem that we've had, of course, is the war. Uh, this is Brother Sasha. Uh, I, I guess you folks have a name, Kim. Kim is a common name. So what is it? What? Last name. Uh, we have a common name, Alexander. Everybody in Ukraine is Alexander. And uh, so we call him Sasha, uh, Shura, Shoni, uh, and there's a couple other ones that we can call Alexander. And, uh, and it, it's a boy name, and it's a girl name, and it's a dog name. <laughs> uh, here in America, if you were to go to Tennessee, Kentucky, North South Dakota, uh, excuse me, North South Carolina, and if you were to say Bubba, would Bubba please come up to take up the offering? You'd have four dogs, two cats, and a, and a, and a man and a woman that came up to take up the offering, Bubba, down south. But this is Sasha. And Sasha's a good brother. Uh, he loves the Lord. He serves the Lord. He's faith. He faithfully witnesses of Jesus Christ everywhere. The community knows who he is. 
and they respect him. He is a good guy. He got drafted to go into the army when this conflict started. He went to the border right on the east side of Russia and Ukraine and served the Lord God. Excuse me. Served his country. My apologies. Uh, but he did serve God in a way because he protected my right to be there as a preacher. Russia doesn't like preachers. Russia would kill preachers. In a, in a setting, a context like this, they've done it. In Ukraine, the soldiers have killed pastors over there. In the east side of Ukraine, where the war and the fighting is. They have done other things. Sasha went there to go fight because the government called him to. And man, we, it, 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 there was a lot of death. And we prayed for him and prayed for him and prayed for him. He tells of one time where they were hiding in a basement of a little structure, of a little house. We're hiding in a basement. They had, uh, Russia were, was firing on them for four hours. They had bombs launched on them. They had about 250 rockets were launched on their position. And him and about 30 guys were down in a basement hiding. And Sasha and them, they all thought this is it. And so Sasha says, if this is it, I'm going to go one last time preaching to them. Amen? <laughs> and so he asks, if you were to die, boys, you know, if you were to die today, would you go to heaven or hell? Boom, boom, boom. <laughs> he had their attention, you know. I mean, when you think you're going to die, you start thinking about eternity. Amen. Uh, I thought that last night at about 10 o'clock as this guy, <laughs> he preached Jesus Christ to them. And he had, he said, all 30 of them prayed with him to trust Jesus Christ as their Savior. You know, God, God must have just been waiting. Because as soon as they said amen and everybody prayed, it was silent. No more rockets. They didn't, weren't attacked anymore. That was it. <laughs> that, who was it? That was God. And you know what? We prayed for him and prayed for him. God brought him back safe. A piece of shrapnel took out his Bible one day as he was serving there, and this is him in church raising his Bible up, saying, giving a testimony of God's goodness. God's good. God's always been good. God's good to you whether you deserve it or not. God's good. Uh, he deserves a whole lot more to, de he deserves more from you than what he gets. God's good. But we had a problem, and those problems are the church's you know, it, it, it was faltering there for a little bit. So Brother Chris Rue said, well, we're going to do our own. We're going to train up the next generation. And so we did our own church Bible institute five days a week, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. And we had them there four hours in classes and four hours of work afterwards. And, uh, and, and th these are some of the men that we had there. This is, uh, I think, all of them, mostly all of them that were there. And uh, they're good folks. These are good people. Uh, all of them love the Lord. And uh, if you see this one right there, uh, he's kind of the, the special one, I guess, because God, God tapped on his heart to be the pastor of the church there. And so it's been to train him up. That's Alyosha. Uh, Alyosha. And so what, what's the goals now? Well, the goals now are that young man right there is supposed to take over the church. Uh, Brother Rue uh, is supposed to go, when he's done, when he feels the Lord's ready, he's going to go to a new area, start a church. Our plans, go to a new area and start a church. This is a break-off time for us right now, and that's why we are here in the States for this extended period of time. We've been here for a year. Uh, as, I, as the pastor asked, we are raising the rest of our support while we're here. We're almost done. We're almost done. We're, uh, we're over 90% of what we need. We have about uh, three months left, and uh, I hate driving. I'm tired of it. Amen? I mean, we've seen Yosemite, but, uh, and we've seen, you know, the sequoia trees, and we've been to Yellowstone National Park, and we've seen the uh, Mount St. Helens. You can keep all of that stuff. I just want to be in Ukraine. Amen? My, I hurt, if you know. That's painful from all the time you sit in the car. <laughs> uh, th uh, th you can keep all of this. Your great state of California, you can keep it. I want Ukraine, amen. Uh, but we're, uh, Lord willing, 
Lord willing, we are going to be returning here in, uh, in a few months. Uh, um, what, did you have a time you wanted me to be done by? I, won't, I, will, I will not take a lot of time here, uh, but the pastor said it's okay. You listen to your pastor, amen. <laughs> uh, this, was, this was 2002. Jeju, you remember that young man up there, 2002? He remembers him. Brother Jay told me I looked fat as soon as he saw me. And I said, yeah, I know. Why? Because I've been in America. Uh, I've gained 25 pounds since coming back to America just over this last year. Why? Because of McDonald's? Yeah. But anyway, uh, this, was, this was 2002. In between PBI years, I went to Ukraine. We, we led six people to the Lord when we went over there in 2002, and I felt like God was calling me to go back there to be a missionary. We had an older gentleman in our class, Mel Witter. I don't know if, if Brother Jay back there remembers uh, Brother Witter, uh, but he was an older gentleman, good guy, uh, very respected man, but uh, he's, he's, his uh, daughter is the missionary here, uh, Naomi, Chris and Naomi Rue, but I went, back, uh, I went back to Ukraine, like I said. But, you know, you think, you think when you go serve the Lord, you've got ambitions, you think everything's going to go, and, and uh, not, nothing ever goes according to plan, amen? And uh, one thing is the country just, it's not a nice country. <laughs> and here's a little sign. It says, Pakupaitis dis, drugom mesta vas abmanut ishobolshe. says, shop here at the other store. They'll cheat you worse than we will. Everybody knows, every Ukrainian I have ever talked with tells me how corrupt their country is. Everyone. And I guess it's true. Amen. Uh, this is our road that leads to our church. If you are going to come to our church, you will, and it had rained, you will walk through this road to come to our place. And we just say, God bless you, folks. Uh, because, hey, I, I wouldn't do that if it was my church. <laughs> I, we t what we tell them is, if this was America, Americans wouldn't come if that's what they had to do. Uh -uh. But our folks, they, could, they, have, uh, they have some character when it comes to that. I do walk through that, actually, to go to our church there. But, uh, that, that, yeah, we have some of the worst roads in the world. And uh, it, that does not make life easy on us, amen? But the whole system, it's just corrupt, top to bottom. It's just corrupt. And... You know, I don't, I don't like thinking about America, where she's going right now, but Ukraine's been there for years already. Ukraine's been there for years. She has rejected the Bible years ago and set this monster up. What is this? This is a religion. If that's all that you have is a religion, you have nothing. They don't have Jesus Christ as a Savior. They have a religion. When I talk to a lady and I tell her about Jesus Christ, this lady tells me, of course, I speak Russian, but I have an accent. And when I speak Russian, she asks, where are you from? I say, I'm from America. And this lady tells me, oh, well, we have our own Jesus over here in Ukraine. They do. They have their own Jesus. And it ain't this one right here. You know, this is called the Eastern Orthodox Church, and uh, what they do is two times a year, they go stand in long lines outside their church building, wait, 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 wait. Usually outside, the, the, the priest has a big thing of water where he'll take a brush and he'll sprinkle water on everybody to bless them for the year. And uh, God decided to bless them with the rain, you know, this year. Uh, but they, that wasn't good enough for them, you know. This is religion, two times a year, and that's it. You know, they think that's all you need to do. They, they have a God uh, where Catholics, they have seven sacraments. Uh, the Orthodox have seven mysteries. Why? Because they believe God is a mystery. They believe God is something, I don't have a picture of it, but, uh, but uh, up here, back in the back end of the church, they have uh, two golden doors that are shut. Every church has them. They have two golden doors that are shut, and behind those doors is God. And only the priest can go into those doors. It sounds somewhat 
like what the Bible had done until Christ did this. And until he became the mediator between God and men. But this is what they do. And you know, their religion consists of no hope, no Jesus Christ, no prayer to God, no salvation, no security, no peace, no love, no joy. And so what do they do? This is what they do. What is this? This is one of their icons. This is one of their sacraments. Um, this is one of their, I'm, I'm looking for relic. That's the word I'm looking for, relic. What is a relic? Well, inside that beautiful box, supposedly, is a bone of a dead man. This guy had died uh, 1,500 years ago. His name is St. Pantelimon. Pantelimon. From Greece. And they said he was something spectacular. He was a good guy. And they said that uh, he, can, he can bless you. How can he bless you? He's dead. Uh, where the dead go, there's no hope there. There's no life in a dead man. But they put a little bone in there and they say, come on up, come down to it, bow down before it, kiss it, worship this thing, pray to this thing, and it will bless you and it will give you healing and it will help you. And you know what? 30,000 people every single day come to the, came to this thing to see it. 30,000 people, you know, you know. Now, this is religion. If you don't know religion, I'll tell you, religion is two things. It's money and control. It wants your money, and it wants to control your existence, and that's what this is about. You know there's a door charge? Why? Because it's about money. They have their things, you know, they baptize babies. You know, that costs money. You remember the, how much money they make? They have to pay about $50 to have their baby baptized. We had a lady in our church uh, that, was, that was being witnessed to to get saved, and she said, I want to go to the priest to go ask him about this. So she goes to the priest and says, I've been living in sin, committing adultery with this person. You know, I, I, I'm a sinner. I want to get my heart right with God. And the priest said, it starts with this. She knew better. She came to us. We gave her the God of the Bible, and she trusted Jesus Christ and got saved. Not everybody does. Most of them are deceived. Now, listen, I don't think Ukrainians are, are dumb. I don't think they're stupid. But what they are is deceived. 2 Corinthians 4, 4 talks about the God of this world, Satan, hath blinded the minds of them that believe not the gospel of Jesus Christ. That's half of the work is getting through that blindness to introduce somebody to Jesus Christ. A lot of times it starts with compassion. Yes, just yesterday, I had the opportunity to introduce two people to Jesus Christ. Why? Because their car was broken down in the middle of Yosemite Park. And no one was stopping them, was stopping to come by and help them. And I drove by. I had to go a mile down the road until there was a turnaround. And I turned around and came back up. And their car was broken. They had a, they had a flat tire is what I meant to say. And so I came and helped them and, 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 and flop, flop, uh, changed their tire. And I gave them a track at the end. I told them, don't, op don't feel obligated. You don't have to take this. But, I but I'd like you to. And this will tell you about Jesus Christ. You know, a lot of times that's what it starts with. That's what it starts with some people. They need to know with all that the world talks about with love, they don't have no love. They are searching for somebody to care for them and love them. You know, sometimes when I pass out tracts, you know what I say? I say, I tell them, I say, this will tell, this will tell you, um, I forget what I say. <laughs> it'll tell you the love of God, but what, is, what do I say, Sarah? Yeah, this will tell you about how, much, how God loves you. That, I know that doesn't sound like a Bible believer. 
Amen. Bible believers are supposed to talk about wrath and judgment. Amen. Amen. But sometimes, you know what? I've had people break down in tears because that's just what they needed to hear for the day. These folks have been blinded. Blinded by the, by the multitude to the devil. And who, who, who can open up their eyes to this, net, to this mess and nonsense? They don't let us. We preach and preach and preach. And, man, they lie about us and they make fun of us and they call us names. They call us a cult. They call us crooked. They call us, uh, they say that we're only, we're only we, the, the offerings that we take up. You know, they say we're out for the money. They make 150 a month. I'm not out for their money. We don't, you know, missionaries, churches from America support us. We don't ever take a dime from the folks we're witnessing to. We give to the folks that we're witnessing to over and over and over again. That's through you folks. The money that churches like yours, it gets given to the folks overseas. But that's the lies that they say about us. They say that in church, we turn the lights off so that we can swap spouses. <laughs> they say, don't send your kids to church because they'll, the Baptists, they'll eat the brains out of their heads. And so what? So we, we don't have very many people. People don't listen. They won't even take the first step of listening. What, do I, what, what, what's, what are some good things? Let me give you a couple of good stories here, and then I will be done. And, and uh, this guy, I slipped in, Dr. Ruckman, into my slideshow. You know, he's it's secrets. I put him in for secret because he, he's offensive to some people for some reason. I, I don't understand. But uh, this is uh, Taras Alexandrovich, Tar Taras. Uh, and he's, uh, he was the first Ukrainian I met. So he was my translator. And uh, he was a good guy, but he wasn't always good. He was a wicked man when he was younger, and uh, he spoke English very well, uh, Ukrainian, Russian, French, Polish. I'm not sure if there was a sixth or not, but he could speak all of those languages. He translated for me. He was a, he was a top, uh, top level translator. Uh, he did a fantastic job, and uh, he would, he, you can guess, he did get saved eventually. God changed him, and that young man, or that young man said, my talent, it's all yours now, God. Everything I have that I can do, uh, you use it for your glory now. And God took that, God took that gift that, that Taras gave him, and that man has translated thousands of sermons for us over the years. He has helped lead Dozens and dozens of people to Jesus Christ. He's but, young, he's but one man. He's only one man. And God could use anybody like that. But this man, I want to tell you, the one thing he did is he just said, Lord, he laid himself down on the altar for Christ and said, God, what do you want me to do with my life? That's what everyone here. Lay yourself down and say, God, what do you want me to do? That's what I did when I was 15. I said, God, anything. You, if you want me to preach, I'll preach. If you want me to be a lawyer, I'll be a lawyer. If you want me to be a doctor, I'll, uh, I'll think about it, you know. <laughs> That's what this man did. And look, look, God used him. God can use you. He say, hey, I'm a nobody. That's good. It's good to be a nobody because God's a master of taking nobodies and using them for his glory. This is Dima. Dima, Dimitri, Kalinin. And uh, what we do with, uh, with names in Ukraine is um, they have their given name, and then they have their father's name, and then they have their family name. So that's how they do it in Ukraine. And, uh, and so to be polite to somebody, uh, I, I, do you know what his father's name is? Petr? No, I don't remember either. But for an example, his name would be Dimitri Pyotrovich Kalinin. That would be an example of, of his name, then his father's name, and then his family name. So I, I had to learn. I had to research. I had to look up on the Internet last night. How do Koreans say their names? You know, and you folks have your family name and then your, your sort of first name. It's your brother names or something. No, first name and then your given name. 
yeah. Uh, but this is this is Dima, and uh, he's a he's a good guy now. But back before he got saved, uh, he he uh, he refused. He, he has two boys. He refused. He told his two boys, "You are never, ever going to go to that Baptist church. Never." Why? He he believed everything that was said about us. The whole community, the, where the priest gets up in the pulpit of his church and tells the folks about the wicked Baptist. The priest has gone into the school and told the kids about us wicked Baptists. See, it's, it's in the community. Some people refuse to come to our church because they know it will hurt their reputation in the community. And so he said, your boys are not coming to church. And so he, sent, he, he would go to work. He was a police officer. His two boys snuck off and came to church sometimes. And when Daddy found out about it, mm, he would go off to work. His two boys would come to church. Daddy found out. It just it kept going and going. His two boys got saved at a young age at our church. And this guy also eventually got saved too. But it took a while. It took a while with him, but he got saved, and you know, after he got saved, you know, you guess where his two boys, they grew up, and they're, they're still in church with us, amen? And uh, both of those went off into the world when they turned 18, and God had to draw them back, but God drew them back. And uh, this one, this one right here, not too long ago, he led his grandma to the Lord. Just, just last year, he led his grandma to the Lord. This one right here, you recognize him? He's the guy that's going to be the pastor of the church. That's exciting to see God do what, what, what God does. <laughs> uh, it's exciting. This, this young lady here, uh, you know, just for time's sake, I'm actually going to skip that and uh, close out with this here. Uh, we, we, preached a few, we preached a lot of funerals, uh, but uh, the population of Ukraine is constantly declining. They uh, on, on each year, on average, they have 150,000 less people in the country. Everybody's dying or moving out. Nobody wants to live in Ukraine. And we preached a funeral one day where uh, this, this, uh, this gentleman there uh, was, went to the hospital to get something taken care of, and the hospital killed him. Because why? Because it's socialized. Uh, they didn't treat him. They gave him the wrong treatment first, and then they didn't treat him second, and then he died. But in the process of all of that, we were able to go visit him, and he got saved on his deathbed, literally. His son, who was the soldier that I showed, showed you, he invited us to come preach at the funeral. So, so we went to the funeral, and uh, we went. The, the body is usually kept at the house for one, two, or three days. And then the whole community gathers, or the friends, or whoever, the neighbors, they come and gather uh, around the house. That's what you see here. And then the body is taken and walked down to the uh, graveyard, and that's where we are here. And it was at the graveyard that uh, Pastor Chris Rue was going to preach the gospel to him. And he preached and preached, and uh, he, uh, excuse me, but he, as soon as he got up to preach, as soon as he opened the Bible to preach, the, Ukra or the Ukrainians got right up in his face and told him, shut up and sit down. As soon as he got up to preach, the, uh, the mayor of the city said, this, this time's all done. We're going to be burying this body now. Right before, he, right before he got up to preach, a lady in the crowd said, uh, uh, give, talked about the body, about the man that she knew, and she says, it's these Americans' fault why God killed this man because he was connected to us. And so when we got up to preach, this man came up and started to tell him to shut up and sit down. The people around started kind of yelling and, and murmuring a little bit. And Sasha, he's right there in the blue shirt. He, starts, he tries to beg the people, please let us preach. Let us go on. This is my father. <laughs> I invited these people. And he begs the, the, the crowd to say, please let us go on and more people got up, and I'm, I'm, I actually re video recorded everything, just in case, you know. But 
they, uh, they would not let us preach the gospel there. It was a heartbreaking time. We wanted to preach the gospel to these folks at this funeral to give comfort to the family that just lost their dad. And, and these folks said no. They would not let us preach the gospel. I, that, that stuff, this just doesn't go on everywhere. <laughs> and we were, we were heartbroken, so we gathered around the tomb, and, and uh, the believers finally had the final words and said, God, would you, would you please do, do something here and work? We didn't have the opportunity to preach Jesus Christ, but would you please do something here? And so we prayed and just, and just uh, and sang a song and walked away, but... This, this man right here, his name is Alexander Mikhailovich. He's, he came up to me and he told me, he says, Brother Klein, he, said, he says, don't listen to what was said. He said, I, I am very thankful for what you're doing here. And you know why? Because a missionary made all the difference in his life. That man was a man who was a drunk. That was a man who would sleep out on the sidewalks. That was a man who wasted his life, was doing nothing for the world, or nothing for the Lord. His life was going nowhere. It was going to hell. Nobody cared for him. But God sent a missionary. A missionary came to him and preached the gospel. And Jesus Christ came down and heard his prayer of his, his get, to get saved and picked him up, cleaned him off, and set him on a path serving and following Jesus Christ. Why, is, why, why be a missionary? For people like that. Listen, you're going to get stuff like this. You will always have people telling you, don't listen. Don't preach. Keep the church in the walls. Why are you taking this out to us? Uh, you're so judgmental. You'll always have people like that. I'm not doing it for them per se. I'm doing it for the Alexander Mikhailoviches. I'm doing it for that one, maybe. That two, maybe that three. But I'm just, just keep treading, just keep plowing, just keep going, keep getting it. You'll get that one right there that says, thank you, thank you for preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ to me. This is our field. This is who we are. This is what we've been doing. This is what we're going to go back and try to do again. Amen. And uh, let's just have a word of prayer. God, thank you. Lord, I love you. Thank you for your son, Jesus Christ. Thank you for dying for me. Thank you for dying for the folks of Korea. Thank you for dying for the folks of Ukraine. Lord, thank you, Father. Lord, you, you, only you would do something like that. God, I'm too selfish. Only you would see the whole world and see time and eternity to look forward even 2,000 years and say, God, that man up there needs me. God, you, you died, Father. You paid for my sins. And God, not only that, Father, you've called the people that have you saved to serve you. Father, help us to serve you here. Help me to do my part. Help Pastor Kim, help Pastor Shrive, help the church here to do their part. Help them to be faithful, to fight through the discouragement, and to see and pray and trust and that you would grow and do, do your work here in this city. Lord, I love you. God, you've never failed. You're not going to fail. Lord, this is all about you, Father. Thank you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.